through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 151. We're drinking some rum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of Moonrise Kingdom, we're mm -hmm. going to be talking about summer camp movies. Yeah. You know, some of them are fun. Yes. Some of them, not so fun. Most of them in the 80s. Yeah, the 80s, they really... Oh, yeah, there's some in the 90s, too. Okay. You know, I was surprised. Like, I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, they really kind of dropped that as a theme, you know? Mm -hmm. Summer camp was kind of a big deal. I think, you know, my theory, maybe the fact that summer camp seems to be, like, a dwindling medium. Like, I don't really know a lot of kids going to summer camp anymore. I think that combined with the fact that, as we'll obviously talk about, some of them have horror movies, dwindling medium, plus horror movies being at them, probably helps the dwindling it probably doesn't help but i don't know if i if i were going to summer camp if i would be too worried about you know but at the age that slashers. kids actually go to summer camp are the kind of age that they're going to be worried about things like they that. don't get a say in that stuff their parents <laughs> just force them come on so we're gonna go back a ways in time back mm -hmm. to the uh swinging 70s to get this thing started oh, that's right yes it's the last year of the 70s, it still counts. <laughs> and we're talking about Meatballs mm -hmm. here. This is the Bill Murray uh, comedy, or at least he was in the first film of the franchise. It yes. became like a four, five, six film Some, franchise. Yeah, like a lot of the 80s franchises. But you know, it's basically wacky hijinks of counselors and campers uh, one summer, um, particularly focused on Bill Murray mm -hmm. sort of mentoring a young kid, mm -hmm. and the young kid sort of supporting Bill Murray and his romantic hijinks. Um, Oh, I hijinks. I think it's funny because the kid was, uh, was it Chris Makepeace, if you remember him, from mm -hmm. My Bodyguard? Doesn't sound familiar. It's one of those hippie kids. Come on, Chris Makepeace. Does that not sound like nope. it? Yeah. All right. Sorry. Anyway. Um, I'll take your word for it. It's also case. noble that, that, just... that this is the first uh, film appearance with Bill Murray in a starring role. How about oh, that? How about that for a knowledge bomb <laughs> on you? Fair enough, Spencer. Yeah. You, uh, you know, it's... Meatballs is probably one of the most disposable ones mm. in the genre. Really not a heck of a lot of depth to it. I mean, I guess there's some with the relationship between Makepeace and Murray, mm. where there's a little bit of guidance. But for the most part, it's really... It set the template for, like, generic camp movies to that follow. Will, that will touch on? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I like it. Started you know? the cliche of the wacky hijinks ensuing at the summer camp. I like this one, and I actually... Um, it gets a little bit more ridiculous as the series goes on. I think, like, Corey Feldman was in, like, Meatballs 4, as I recall, <laughs> which I actually kind of enjoy. You know, I just, I like, I like it. It's a fun thing. It was directed by Ivan Reitman, though, so you can't go really wrong with that. I mean, Oof. dude did Ghostbusters. Yeah. Dude did Kindergarten Cop, Twins, Dave, Evolution. Dude's been around for a All while. Right. Fair so, enough. You, know, you got me there. Good on you for that, Ivan Reitman. <laughs> uh, we're going to jump slightly forward into the 80s. Uh-huh. Um, and go the up. Mm -hmm. direction into the horror genre yes. with perhaps the greatest horror summer camp one of all time, which yeah. is Friday the 13th. Of course. Kids at a summer camp getting killed mm -hmm. for their promiscuity yep. and uh, behavior. Setting up all those rules for Scream to then Lampoon later. Yes. But it also, I think, the thing that needs to be noted, as Scream would talk about in their opening, was that... that Jason wasn't the bad guy. The yeah, Jason's one. not actually the bad guy. And I think that's why this is the, by far the, my favorite of that series, mm -hmm. is because there's a complexity. Like, this is a damaged woman who's running it this time. and Getting you know, revenge for her child. And that, kind of. Right. And, you know, there's it's not an unstoppable force yeah. in the first movie. Mm -hmm. Like, granted, it's sort of hints at that yeah. as it ends, yeah. but you know. And it seems um, like it, but you know, it's not in, in reality. No, and, Jason I, Voorhees. and I think that's the scariest thing of all. Like, you know, an unstoppable force, yeah, that's scary, but I haven't really run into one of those in my <laughs> real life. Like, maybe when I do, I'll be able to be like, you know what? Yeah. That is scary. Yeah. But, I, you know, I like it and it's it's kind of funny to think about. Let me let me drop a little bit of uh, trivia for okay. you. Okay, okay. Um, this film was nominated for two awards. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess special effects. No. Oh. Okay. You're going. You're going like the good awards. Oh, Razzies. This, yeah. Oh, this was okay. nominated for worst picture oh. and worst actress for Betsy Palmer, nice. who played uh, was it Mrs. Voorhees. Nice. It's funny to think about <laughs> them crapping on a film that has become like a beloved classic, and like 
an institution for yeah. a fran like you know horror going mm -hmm. forward so it's funny to think you know i i wonder you know they have a 2020 awards for the academy awards mm -hmm. where you look back on the academy awards 20 years in the past okay. and revote okay um Kind of feel like, you know, after the last few weeks and some of the Razzies we mentioned, maybe we need to reevaluate what are getting Razzies, because mm. I, don't, I don't think I would include Friday the 13th in the conversation. Granted, it's not like, you know, Schindler's List or something. I was going to say, it's not necessarily good either. <laughs> but it's it's a very interesting and entertaining film. Like, I'm okay. not going to crap on it. Okay. So, suck on that, Razzies. Fair enough. One of my favorite camp movies, one mm. that inspired me personally, was 1986's Space Camp. Oh, God, that atrocity. Oh, it's awesome, oh. dude. How, can, how can you go wrong when you have, like, a sweet female cast of Kate Capshaw, Leah Thompson, and Kelly Preston? I can tell you how. You make a movie about going to space. No, that that's awesome. That comes out what six months after. Well, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's that. Yeah. That was just unfortunate timing. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that ended up being a disaster because of that. <laughs> but you know, dude, I don't think it think just about became that. a disaster because of that. So. Oh, I totally believe that. Listen, Joaquin Phoenix like breaking out in this film, even though he's credited as Lee Phoenix, I believe. <laughs> you have robots. You get to go to outer space as a kid, dude. This is like the coolest thing ever. Like yeah. I was a kid, I wanted to go space camp granted i broke my arm didn't, didn't get to go it's a real tragedy that scarred oh. me in my life but like come on man that would be awesome you have tate donovan and tom scare like this thing this thing's awesome you know how awesome this film is it is terry o'quinn as the launch director all right okay you got me there that is freaking awesome dude like i just want to go home and i'm gonna rent it like right now when i leave scarecrow and go watch it because that is how awesome i'm into this film and the director harry weiner or harry winner um mm -hmm. Really didn't do a heck of a lot of other stuff besides TV, mm. but he did direct House Arrest, if you remember <laughs> that film, with like, uh, was it Jamie Lee Curtis, oh, I think, Kevin Pollock, where the kids yes. lock their parents in the basement. Yes, I do that, remember that movie. That's him as well. Dude <sighs> deserves more right. I, I'm, I'm all on. I'm all in. Uh, shit, this makes me want to go to space now. Like, <laughs> I want to go to space, but not the way that '80s space movies uh, dude, sent me. To I want to go. To, I want to go to space in like a, a, a rocket with a robot. Like that would be like my dream. Like I'm not even a kid anymore, and that would still be awesome. I'm totally, I'm to <laughs> totally on board with it. Sadly, uh, you're right. Yeah, a flop, <laughs> bad timing. It's sort of like you know, uh, was it Collateral? Collateral damage. Oh, yeah. The uh, yes. Schwarzenegger film that came out right after like 9/11. Yes. That was mm -hmm. about terrorism. Yeah. Sometimes you get screwed, man. They made this film well before the Challenger yeah. blew up. What are you gonna do? Like put it on the shelf for like four years? Like how long yeah. is enough? How long is enough? <laughs> when is when? <laughs> um, another one of my favorites is 1994's Camp Nowhere. Mm. The story of a group of kids who are gonna be put into camp by their parents okay but as an alternative to that they create their own fictitious camps where they're all hanging out together with christopher lloyd nice sort of watching over them <laughs> being a loose like turn like the creepy pedo uncle that he is yeah watching them. well it's sort of like um <laughs> made me think did you ever see the movie accepted with a uh, Justin Long, Justin Long, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yes. Where Louis Black, okay, is yeah. sort of like the uncle of Jonah Hill, okay. who just sort of was like the figurehead uh -huh. for the college. Yeah. Same sort of thing with Christopher Lloyd. He just kind of hung out in a trailer mm -hmm. and dealt with things when they needed him, like when it was Parents' Day or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. The thing about this was, did you ever go to camp when uh, you were a no. kid? Like I never really got the opportunity. Like I went, I went camping with my family. Like I went instead. to like day camps usually mm -hmm. over the summer. Like maybe like a couple weeks or okay. maybe six weeks or something and the most we ever did was go like overnight one or two nights mm -hmm. at a, like a, a camp camp but never like i never went like far away yeah. for summer camp it never was a thing for me and yeah. so this is sort of like what i would imagine because i would <laughs> i would really i don't think i would come or a, a dash well to summer <laughs> camp like arts and crafts really doesn't seem like my kind of thing like eh, so this is this is probably how i would have approached mm -hmm. the problem fair now, enough it's a it's a fun film, you know. Mm. It's definitely got you know some people who are like Andrew Keegan and Jonathan Jackson, who kind of went on to be mm -hmm. modest successes. But you know, I I, I like it. I think mm -hmm. it's fun to sort of like think about what would happen if a bunch of kids, <laughs> sort of like the inmates running an asylum. I love that kind of stuff. Fair enough. Yeah, I love Fair it. Fair enough. Spencer. I love it. Another one that is, again, more 
entertaining, but in a guilty pleasure mm, sort of way, mm -hmm. was the Opus Heavyweights. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, from director Stephen Brill. Written, though. By Judd Apatow. Yes. Stephen Brill is way, way in the Judd Apatow camp, though, because his other work, you know, is Little Nicky and Mr. Deeds, okay. who Adam Sandler, good friend of Judd Apatow, mm -hmm. I think they were roommates at some point, actually. Mm. Um, and Drillbit Taylor, which was produced by Judd Apatow as well. Um, so, you know, you, you, you've got that going for mm -hmm. you, and then you have tons of, like, Didn't other have people. Ben Stiller in it. Yep, Ed Ben yeah. Stiller and his parents, Anna oh, Mira okay. and well, Jerry Stiller. Yeah. Um, about a kid who's sent to a fat or like a fun camp for uh -huh. fat kids to lose weight. Fat which is, camp. <laughs> yeah, but it's also <laughs> bought out by this mm. fitness guy played by Ben Stiller, who then turns into like, um, like a serious fat camp. <laughs> like, I'm like trying work to, your fat off. I was thinking die. like you know like uh, like Boot a camp prison camp <laughs> sort of like these ki poor kids are like being tortured basically <laughs> by this. Um, <laughs> fitness fanatic, and you know, ultimately Kid rise torture. up. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it <is. laughs> but uh, they ultimately rise up. You know, they get in a competition with like the athletic camp mm. next door, and I, I, I think it's a fun movie. Mm. It's a little bit cheesy, but you know, it ultimately has a good heart, yeah. which I like in movies to have good heart, mm -hmm. and you know. I think this was one I caught like 20 minutes of on cable one time where I was like, why is Ben Stiller yelling at these overweight yeah, kids? Yeah, Ben Stiller. <laughs> that was the extent of what I saw about it. This is Ben Stiller, you know, in his over-the-topness, mm -hmm. like... Dodgeball-esque? Yeah, dodgeball-esque. There's a great parallel, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I really I really like it, but I definitely acknowledge it's not a great film. <laughs> definitely willing to concede that one. But, you know... I still I missed my radar. Not surprising. I'll watch it if it's on TV. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not ashamed by that. I recommend everyone do it right now. Come on, support the cause. You know. And in fact, if there were a summer camp, mm -hmm. I wish it were like the one after Ben Stiller's gone in the movie, mm. where it's like fun again. Yeah, like yes. they have like the blob where they jump on it, springs <laughs> the kid in the air. They get to drive go karts and stuff. Like that is a summer camp. Spencer Which is why would summer go camps to. don't exist because no one would run that. Because why would you? Because that would be awesome, dude. Would you not want to run a summer camp why where not, you have go-karts? If you had all that stuff, why not put it just in a city so it could be year-round rather than someone that can only be got exclusively oh, during God. the summer? Can you figure out how hard that would be to run in a city? Not that hard. Dude, where are you going to get room for like a go-kart no, I'm not track? talking about like a me crazy metropolitan city right in the heart of it, like Fifth and Pine. I mean, like, come on, like outskirts. Outskirts. I, I'm, I'm down with go-kart camp. <laughs> Somebody can make that happen, let me know, and I will be there. It probably exists. Go-kartcamp.com. I'll show you that. <laughs> Set it up right now. One that you brought up, though, mm -hmm. was a funny film to think about, and there are any number of sort of incarnations we yeah, could talk about, exactly. but the one I decided we should go with was the 1998 release of The Parent Trap, mm -hmm. the remake of uh, the 60s classic yeah, from I think Disney. It was, yeah. You know, the thing about this that made me want to talk about was this is early, early Lindsay Lohan. Like under under 15. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> like maybe and under 10. <laughs> this is like Lindsay Lohan paired with, was it Natasha Richardson and oh, yes, that's uh, right. Dennis Quaid. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are good parent mm -hmm actors to play and you know i really really like Lindsay lohan as a young actor i think actress yeah. i think she's really really talented yeah, there's you know? a reason she got so popular so fast i mean you think about mean girls mm -hmm. and freaky friday like those two films i think are fantastic yeah it was sort of thereafter that she started to get a little <laughs> bit more uh celebbed out <laughs> loose in her film selection and perhaps in her life as well you know, it's just, it's a real tragedy when you see sort of films like that. Because she was really a talented actress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really, I hope she gets back to that. I, I think she, I think I she's, could care less. <laughs> I, I think, Sorry, Lindsay. <laughs> I think, I think it's still in there. Um, it's, it's sad. It really makes me sad to think about this. Mm -hmm. But you also got to give some um, credit to the director, Nancy Myers. You got the female mm -hmm. director, female mm -hmm. actress pairing going on, which is pretty good. Because she's done some really interesting stuff, actually. She did What Women Want, okay. the Mel Gibson mm -hmm. film, and mm -hmm. uh, Helen Hunt. Mm -hmm. And she did Something's Gotta Give. Yeah. 
Not a great one, but you know, she's on the holiday. It's complicated. Mm. Uh, it's it's good to see her doing, you know, major mm. Hollywood productions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good to get some diversity going out there. I like yeah. that. So, yeah, definitely. Go on you for that. And if it wasn't proof enough that I'm saying Lindsay <laughs> Lohan was good in this film, as if that isn't enough to uh -huh. sell you on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to give you an example of what was going on with Lindsay Lohan at this time, she was nominated for the Blockbuster Award for Female Newcomer. Like, I'm glad Blockbuster gives awards. Look, dude, there's no there's no Golden Glove for newcomer. Like, you know, there's no Golden Glove for that. There's no Academy Award. I'm glad somebody's paying attention to the newcomers, whether it's Blockbuster oh, or MTV too, or somebody. Just... I'll take what I can get, dude. If somebody's willing to give me a Blockbuster Award, I will take that the award. The KFC Bucket of Chicken award I will take that for award. a new upcoming take, actor. I will take any award I can get, son. <laughs> Think about it. Um, uh, one that you were uh, very quick to point out that yeah. was an easy one to yeah. throw into this list was Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah, I mean, this how can one. You not? That's. I guess you would call this maybe like a meta summer camp movie because it's it, a summer camp movie. <laughs> but it's like cognizant of other summer camp movies and sort of makes fun of the tropes of summer camp okay. movies. Fair enough. Boom! Drop a little film philosophy David on Wayne, you. David Wayne, right? Directed? Yes, David Wayne, who did Role Models, and he just did Wonderlust. Mm -hmm. He's one of those guys like Joss Whedon, to a certain degree, mm. that I kind of feel like is sort of lurking in the outskirts of indie film slash mm -hmm. somewhat mainstream film that I feel like... Picking things based on his own decision rather than writing well, there's the that, wave. But it's also like, I feel like he is somebody who some at some point could pop. Mm. And pop oh, yeah. in a very big way. Because he's got... I'm amazed he hasn't already. Tons of, you know, friends like, you know, Paul Rudd mm -hmm. and, uh, was it see, Michael Showalter, mm -hmm. Michael Ian Black. These are dudes like he worked with, you know, way back mm -hmm. to Stella and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Um, so it really... It really is one of those guys that I feel like has the potential to pop. Mm -hmm. Maybe he won't. I don't know for sure. But I feel like he's in my thoughts as one of those guys yeah. who is sort of right in that conversation of who could mm -hmm. be could be a contender. But this is this movie is like the all star cast of Palooza. I mean, oh my god! It's ridiculous. Know, Everybody: Paul Rudd, in it. Christopher Maloney, Molly Shannon, Ken Marino, Joe Latrulio, Amy Poehler, Bradley Cooper. Mm -hmm. Boom. And that same include like Janine Garofalo, mm -hmm. like or David Hyde Pierce, uh, Marguerite Moreau. Like it's it's crazy yeah. how much talent there is in this film. And it's crazy to think that this was a small little film mm -hmm. that did like modestly in the theaters. Mm -hmm. Though I saw it in the theaters, nice. want a pat on the back for that. You can get one. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> I think I just saw it last big... year. Did you really? Yeah, that was the first time you saw it. Yeah, wow. I, I I I was in this weird bubble where somehow. All of the state crew, you know, the MTV show, the state, mm -hmm. everything that those people went and did afterwards, including the state, missed me. Didn't grow up with cable. Never yeah. knew about the state. Never knew about most of the incarnations, Viva Variety, and those things mm -hmm. till afterwards. Yeah. Like, Reno 911 was probably the first time I was really introduced into any of those tertiary actors. And then have slowly worked my way back down the rabbit hole, back through the rest of them. But it's good for yeah, they all missed my first just... Whoosh, and now, right now you're all in? Oh, yeah. Love them all. That's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> that brings us to this... Didn't mean to get all nostalgic on I you. Believe, I love sorry. it, man. Just, just a little tear. Too many feels. Tears. <laughs> tears running down these cheeks. These eyes are crying. <laughs> Thanks to you. Nice. Nice. This Friday, though, we have Moonrise Kingdom. Yes. We're talking about... The 25th mm -hmm. of May. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good good times, good times. This is directed by... Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. Mm -hmm. Who I sort of have a love-tolerate relationship with. <laughs> as, I, as I know. I like, I like him as a director. I feel like he's very clever, very talented. I just wish he would try and do different stuff. I do agree with you there. Like he, he However, he, if him not doing different stuff doesn't make me like his actual stuff any less. No, I me mm, Yeah, me, see, but I think that's more mm, you fall. But it's like, you know Where every time one comes out that looks like another Wes Anderson movie, I see you going, eh, just a little bit. <laughs> it's like it's like Michael Sarah. You know, mm. I love Michael Sarah. I can't really fault him for playing the same role every time because he does it so well. Mm -hmm. But I wish he'd do something different. It's like mm. Jesse Eisenberg. Mm. He was mm -hmm. just like Michael Sarah that way, but then he did the social network. Yeah. 
and it blew my top off. Like I was <laughs> blown away by that. I just and it goes the same is true for Wes Anderson. You know, Fantastic mm -hmm. Mr. Fox. I yeah. love. Mm -hmm. He did. It was totally different. Why can't he try and do more stuff like that? Why can't he do some then more? Do a horror film. Come on, Wes. Like I'll I'll throw you <laughs> ideas. Like honestly, I will help you out. Help me help you. Mm. Help me help you. But see, I don't mind his his. You know, he does it his, well. His like style, I can't so I can't fault I like him. It. I just I wish after like six or seven films or whatever we're at mm -hmm. now, like do something different. <laughs> that being said, though, it looks interesting. You know, it's it's uh, got the same great cast as always. You know, mm -hmm. Bill Murray. You got uh, some great supporting roles from uh, Bruce Willis, Edward Norton, mm -hmm. Tilda Swinton, Francis McDormand, mm -hmm. Jason Schwartzman is back. You know, mm -hmm. it's about two young kids at neighboring summer camps yeah. who fall in love and then proceed to run away yes. and all the adults that proceed to chase after them. them yeah and so i see what happened i'm curious to see how much that the film is going to be split between those two major arcs if it's going to be like if it's going to be 50 50 if it's going to be very very little kids most adults if it's going to be the other way around where it's going to be mostly kids very uh, little adults i really don't know and i think that for me is going to be the major I'm, make or break of i am curious movie. about that i tend to think it's going to be more adults pursuing the kids just because, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many talented adult actors and I find it hard to believe that, you know, Bruce Willis is just going to show up for like two minutes. But No, yeah, that's why I think I think it's probably going to be like maybe like a one-third, two-third kind of thing, like a third with the kids, two-thirds with the adults. Close I mean, to don't get me wrong, I'm definitely going to go see it until we in. Mm -hmm. uh, Wes Anderson, just... I really wish you'd do more Fantastic Mr. Fox. I love that movie, man. Like, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Spencer wants more animation. I say... Anything, dude! Like, I don't even need it. <laughs> Horror films, sci-fi films, like, sports films, like, anything, dude. I will see anything you make. Anything. Just do it. Just do it. Like Nike. Don't do it like Nike. That's yeah, no sweatshops. No. That's not cool. <laughs> but with that being said, mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned for our next episode tomorrow where mm -hmm. we talk about Will Smith mm -hmm. in honor of Men in Black 3. Yep. Unfortunately, that's the one we're talking yeah. about in honor of. <laughs> but, you know, Will Smith's a pretty yeah. interesting dude, mm -hmm. so we'll take that as our means to the end there. Indeed. But let us know your feedback to MacGuffinPodcast.com, mm -hmm. Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number, 323-761-9842. We love those voicemails. Keep them rolling mm -hmm. in. Check us out on iTunes, on Blip, Roku, Miro, anywhere else we need to be. Let us know. Check in at Get Glue and leave us reviews. We love those. It's true. We do. Yeah. And we'll give you a shout out on the podcast if you give it one. Mm -hmm. Even if it's bad. <laughs> Especially Though we if it's might bad. give it with a snide <laughs> look in our faces. Oh, there'll be snark. There'll be plenty of, plenty of snark. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.